Film Festival 2020 edition. Um, and a special thank you to Susie and Patrice for consistently using their platform um, to give agency to a diverse slate of female filmmakers. My name is Sam Reitz and I am the founder and of Millennial X Ethics, which is a story engine focusing on generational portraits of global systems. I'm also a writer and very honored to be moderating this next session. Joining me today is Sarah Bennett. Uh, hi, Sarah, thank you so hi, much everybody. for taking the time to be here. Um, Sarah Bennett is a visual effects supervisor and one of the co-founding owners of Milk, a multi-award winning independent visual effects company based in London. Sarah became the second ever female VFX Oscar winner when she received a 2016 Academy Award for Best Visual Effects in Alex Garland's feature Ex Machina, for which she also received a 2016 BAFTA Film Award nomination. Since Milk's launch in 2013, the team has created an impressive range of innovative, complex sequences for high-end TV and feature films, winning an Emmy for Sherlock, three consecutive BAFTA Craft Awards for BBC's Doctor Who, um, and she recently competed production on the over, as an overall VFX supervisor on Netflix's feature film, The Old Guard. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Sarah. That's quite an impressive slate of projects. Um, so to kick us all off, uh, I guess I, I, I'm curious what your starting point was. What sparked your interest in VFX? What got you kind of, what, what film inspired you or what art medium first inspired you? Why VFX and then what navigating those waters in the early years really looked like? Um, so I guess it started off with, uh, it was a passion for horror films. Um, it used to be like a family thing on a Saturday with my father. We used to watch uh, <laughs> horror films together. I oh, know, it's weird. Um, and I, I kind of loved that genre. Um, and prosthetics, I think, was originally where I was thinking I wanted to go. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I sort of grew up with the uh, Labyrinth, um, Dark Crystal, Legends, those kind of films I loved as a mm -hmm. child. Um, so I and, uh, sort of initially pursued a career at what I thought I wanted to do was makeup and prosthetics. Um, and I, there was a course that was close by home um, and it was a brand new course doing sort of covering everything, makeup, prosthetics, hairdressing, all of that kind of thing. So I, I did this course, um, but where I grew up, which is in the, the West Midlands, which is the middle of England, um, there wasn't really much job opportunities. So I moved to London um, and basically uh, started at a a physical effects company, um, which used to do weekend courses and prosthetics with people from the industry. So I thought it was a great way to kind of, you know, get a foot in the door and, and you know, sort of pursue it that way. Uh, anyway, uh, while I was there, I met a, a guy who started talking to me about um, computer effects, as he was saying at the time, um, and just kind of piqued my interest. Uh, and at the time he said, you know, it's, it's full of boys and it's, you know, it's really geeky, you'll hate it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I was like, well, that sounds quite interesting, actually. So um, I, I eventually uh, applied as a runner, uh, sort of a runner's mm -hmm. position to various okay. production companies around London and uh, post-production companies. And that's kind of where it all started. I, um, I went as a runner, which is a great way to do it because you get to see all areas. Yeah. Um, and I fell in love with compositing. Uh, and basically, that's how I started my career in visual effects. Amazing. Um, I think there's there's such a need and such a, a diverse visual tapestry in the horror genre as well. So it's kind of interesting to kind of see that synergy in, in what projects you've selected and yeah. how that's kind of inspired. Um, so that also brings me to understanding the technical. So a lot of the audience, I think, tuning in comes at is probably a little bit less familiar with the technical aspects and I know that you works and specialize in 2D so if you could briefly touch on the difference between 2D and 3D and maybe software like Maya and how that kind of shapes story world and whether or not you know what kind of more technical aspects you were you're using now or how how that what that process really kind of looked like yeah I mean I guess I, I always think of it as you know kind of cake making <laughs> was a simple way <laughs> talk about it is you know because oh, 3d is you know they're creating the sort of cake and 2d is you know we're putting the icing on and decorating it so you know it's kind of like in 2d you know we do the finish to everything and you get given you know created layers in in a 3d package like maya i mean i you know i started off on um god it's really old now there's a machine called henry um that used to be around and i started in commercials originally uh and it was a great sort of robust machine that you know we sort of got to work on which I loved actually. Um, and then, you know, you learn sort of many different softwares as you kind of coming up through your career. So from there, I sort of learned Flame because um, again, I was sort of heading the commercials world originally before I got into film. 
Um, and then, oh God, various things, I forget the name of all now, but Shake, Cineon, and now um, predominantly it's Nuke really, um, which, you know, a lot of companies use, especially long form and film. Um, mm. So, you know, that, that's kind of what we all use at, um, at Milk. Um, in terms of like 3D, yes, Maya, obviously, and Houdini for like effects work, which is great. Um, so yeah, I mean, Nuke is the sort of main, and also, you know, I, there wasn't any courses around when I started, uh, mm. like there is now. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of had to learn on the job, which, you know, it's it's a long process, but it's it was kind of good because you got an overall, um, you know, knowledge of all the sort of departments. Um, you know, and I worked with some very very good senior people who you know taught me a lot as I was coming up through my career. Um, so you know, so I never really learned the sort of technical aspects in terms of education. It was kind of you know hands on mm. as I was coming up through my career. What would you suggest for some of the newer people um, coming up through the VFX arena? What would what would you say are some like low tech alternatives or ways to kind of get that exposure? But maybe if if they're lacking the access or the opportunity, what would what would be your kind of inherent suggestions? I mean, of getting I think that a really good one to be honest. Um, yeah. you know, it teaches you lighting composition, which is really important for uh, you know particularly in visual effects um, and supervising, which is what I do. Um, so. You know, photography art courses obviously are really good to do. Um, and then there's a lot of industry courses now everywhere you can do. I mean, some obviously are expensive, but I understand that, you know, and a lot of companies offer up internships as well. Um, mm. so I think that's always a good route to go. Um, I think mentoring is also very good if people, you know, are trying to get into the industry okay. and just want to ask those questions. I think it's really good to have someone, you know, who's got that experience and knowledge you can kind of reach out to and learn advice from. Um, I think that's really important. But yeah, there's that, that's kind of it really. And, and doing, you know, joining forums like this or um, mm. there's lots of sort of, um, you know, female filmmaking groups that you can join and, you know, meet a lot of different people um, and just contacts, um, which I think is also very good, which again, you know, I never had when I was coming up through my career. So I think it's a great thing. So you spoke a little bit about communication. So what does what your process uh, look, look like when you're working with writer directors in film versus television, or as you said, you started in commercials. So, I mean, the turnaround time is very different depending upon which medium you're thinking of. So yeah. what, and, and then you also have geographic and more cultural differences, those little like nuance experiences. So, and then the idea of working across genres. So it's kind of a three part question in how, how does your kind of communication process change depending upon what who you're working with and then what medium you're more um you're targeting shall we say i mean i think um you know regardless of it's film or television and, and there's really a thin veil between those two now anyway yeah uh, you know, uh so i mean the main thing is you know you've got to i mean we're kind of interpreting uh you know and helping you know the process of um telling a story you know with the director so for me you know it's reading the script understanding that script uh, and then, you know, sitting down with the director, you know, the various heads of department and, you, you know, you discuss, well, you know, we want to, how, how to shoot something and what's the best way to go there. You know, you can do a lot of stuff in visual effects at the moment, um, but I don't think you necessarily have to do them in visual effects. You know, mm. there's a lot of, you know, shooting stuff for real and having the aid of visual effects for things that you can't capture, whether it's, you know, COVID, obviously, um, <laughs> or, uh, or anything that prevents you from, you know, getting what you need to in camera. So I think it's, uh, it's very much a collaboration and you really need to have the understanding of, you know, what the story is and what the people are trying to get across and the, the vision for it. So mm -hmm. I think you really need to get on a, the sort of same wavelength with your director. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'd say film and television are very much the same. And the, the, the sort of creative side of it is the same in any kind of industry, I think, you know, you're still trying to create a vision so that, you know, the concepts there and uh, the direction, um, but, you know, commercial, I mean, time-wise, as you said, so, you know, when we're doing television shows, I don't know, it's a really fast turnaround and generally you're shooting TV as you're creating the post for the first two episodes and you shoot in blocks. It's always like two episodes a block, you know, so you'd be on set shooting, I don't know, say the second block, while everybody started to work on the visual effects yeah. for their first block. So time-wise, it's, you know, it's, it's much stricter and, you know, a much faster turnaround, but you still need to keep that high-end look to it at the end. So it, that, yeah. that's a difficult one, that, you know, you get more time, you know, 
more time with doing the film side of things. I mean, there's still that pressure of, you know, you still have to finish it at some point. Um, but I'd say that's the sort of biggest difference, really. That's cool, though. I feel like so much of what we're seeing now, especially with COVID, like you were saying, is uh, I feel like we're so heavily dependent on, on VFX right now as a solvency mechanism. So yeah. I'm curious, kind of, um, how are you selecting your projects right now, especially given so many production woes um, and a time where we're kind of the most siloed and the most connected all at the same time? It's, uh, what are you seeing? Um, I mean, you know, we um, when when it kind of we all went into lockdown and uh, when we were kind of at melt, we were like, okay, well, everybody needs to go into lockdown. We had to really quickly set up, you know, getting everybody working remotely. Uh, and I'll mm -hmm. be honest, I was amazed at how quickly and how well it was done. And I was uh, delivering the old guard at the same time. <clears throat> so I was in LA at the time uh, with my producer and she lives in Ireland. Um, we were like, oh God, you know, they're about to lock down all the airports, everybody's going home. So we literally, you know, had a conversation with uh, all the, you know, sort of director, editor, and just said, look, we're going to have to go home and get this to work remotely. So that was quite mm. difficult. Um, but, you know, we kind of were back at set up and running again within um, sort of 48 hours. Oh, wow. Um, you know, pretty, it was amazing, actually. It's really amazing. Good. Yeah, and everybody was so good. <laughs> like, you know, we were working with different vendors around, you know, globally. Um, and it just, it was surprisingly, you know, it went very well and very smoothly. Um, and again, I think the biggest thing was having a lot of patience. I mean, in terms of now, because um, because of what's going on, and obviously, you know, we're going through like a second wave again. Uh, it's um, shooting is problematic. I mean, there are productions that are going. Obviously, quite a few big ones are back up again. I mean, it's a whole different world. I think out on set now. You know, there's a lot more restrictions, and you really everything takes a lot longer um, mm. because of that. But in terms of you know what we've been we've been talking about stuff. You know, where normally you'd shoot a play. It's some, let's say you shoot a scene with big crowd in, you know, you can't get all those people out on set now. So that suddenly shots that weren't supposed to be visual effects. Now everybody's yeah. talking about how are we going to do this? So that's been the main thing, I think, is shooting stuff that, you know, shouldn't be visual effects, but it has to be because we need to get these productions up and running again and, and going for everybody's sake so everybody's working. Um, so, you know, it, it's a challenge. But, I mean, our industry and, and many other industries have been global for a while now. Um, so... Mm that's not really come as a big surprise. It's just, you know, I guess being forced to work from home is, is quite difficult, but you know, thank God for Zoom and FaceTime and <laughs> everything else. <laughs> yeah, I think but, we're uh, off you. <laughs> exactly, some, some contact. <laughs> yeah. um, so that kind of brings me to experimentation. So what are your thoughts on some of the emerging tech, uh, XR, that the XR ecosystem, spatial computing, um, how have, those mediums impacted your process of discovery? Have you experimented with them? Are you interested in experimenting with them? What's your general kind of take on, on those kind of mediums? And do you feel like there's any synergy with VFX? Um, um, oh, that's just kind of that, yeah. Um, I I'm not really sure to be honest. I've not really thought about it. I mean, the biggest thing for us, I guess, with what's going on at the moment is like the virtual production, which yeah. everybody's kind of, you know, um, working and we've been working with as well, using Unreal, sort of the gaming engines, um, is the biggest thing, I think, you know, and obviously everybody working remotely, uh, sort of in the cloud, um, which is brilliant, you know, that that's kind of what we've really been looking into. Um, yeah, I can't, can't say really kind of the thought on that, I can't really give you any kind of uh, answer to that because we've not really... I mean, it's an interesting point, but yeah, I've not really looked into it. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so then maybe what, what are you looking towards um, in terms of inspiration? If you, if you're dealing with a particularly tricky script, um, what, what do you pull from typically um, in, in crafting your vision? Um, kind of I, mean, I mean, basically it depends, you know, whatever the subject is, you know, I mean, the internet is, fantastic because you can get so much reference um like when we're doing the old guards uh you know they they can't die they're immortal and part of that whole process was you know they get these wounds and they heal and how do we make that you know you can get on the fantasy route or you know what gina wants to do as a director uh, it had to be she wants to get real photo you know as real she had as a lot it, of her yeah what it should be really Archivals. so i went on like tons of medical websites and that's you know mm -hmm. a lot of horrible stuff but you know it was kind of important to it was really horrible but it was oh, no. important to see, that, yeah, to see that process and desensitize to it really quickly um oh, because no. 
<laughs> yeah, from the but... horror background, from the horror yeah. background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I like, guess <laughs> that's fine for me. Yeah, <laughs> I was wasn't offended at all. Um, but uh, yeah, it was looking at that process and you know how real wo- wounds heal, and you know we had to look into all of that, and it's really interesting actually. And what I love about this job is, you know, depending on what what the uh, what it is you're looking to create as a visual effect, some of the stuff's really interesting. And you end up learning like a lot of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily know about because you're having to look into it to create, you know, whatever this story point is. So, you know, I learned a lot about wounds and healing and, you know, how long it takes. And <laughs> so that was, uh, so I, lo- I love that side of it. I think it's really interesting. You know, it always feels like a new job, which it kind of is because you're doing something different. Well, hopefully you're doing something different every time you're creating, you know, whatever this uh, effect is or, or story point. Um, so this brings me to a little bit more retrospective, career retrospective question. So um, what's been your most instructive moment in your career to date? Um, hmm. oh, I'm not sure, actually. What's been most instructive? Um, I guess like advice I've had really, um, like certain points that, Something you know, that, yeah, people that have, uh, you know, kind of inspired me along the way, um, whether it's like my peers or, um, you know, I mean, I can't say one specific thing. Um, is there a piece of a phrase or a piece of advice that really stuck with you? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, when I was first coming up, I really struggled, like, um, you know, like I said, I got into compositing. And you kind of have to learn on the spot. And I think I had a mm-hmm. real problem with confidence at the beginning, you know, mm. and it was like, uh, I was really kind of hard on myself to uh, to be, you know, I, I was like, my main thing was like, I've got to be this compositor, you know, I don't get it yet. Why can't I do what these guys are doing? Always found it really frustrating. Mm. Uh, I, you know, and also being like scared to ask, like felt like I should know the answer to it, which is, you know, silly, but um, we all do that. We are. Yeah. I remember, yeah. And I remember just I'm reaching out to yeah it's terrible it's really bad and that's one good thing about mentoring is saying the exact opposite to people as they're coming up like ask, ask, <laughs> ask don't be afraid to ask a question um so anyway you know give my own advice there I I did I think I reached out to um he's a senior guy that I work with and you know I said like I'm really struggling and I just don't get it I don't understand and you know he was he was amazing and he was like why didn't you ask me I could just sit and show you and teach you this mm. and you know it was like really helpful and I think from that point onwards you know it's kind of it really helps getting like that good advice and, and losing that kind of fear of asking questions. So there's been moments like that, I guess, which is where, you know, it kind of um, pushes you through your career and uh, sort of moves you on, I guess. Do you feel like the adapting to the more virtual space kind of eliminates that, that sense of feeling or that sentiment a little bit? No, well, I think it's a shame. I think because of that, I think if you're coming up, I think, mm. you know, to, I think it's probably isolating you know mm. um I think it's much better to be able to be in a room and talk to so I mean you know obviously you can talk to you now and and it and it works but I think it's um I feel There's something for, yeah just starting yeah. out you know you sort of sat in a room with that camaraderie and you know you can just turn around and go oh you know by the way anybody know how I do this or what's a great way to do you know I'm trying to create this you know just you don't have that sort of quick immediate answer you know everything has to be organized around Okay, is everybody ready? 10 minutes, we'll jump into a call. So it's not that immediacy you get, you know, if you're all working. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, yeah, I, I feel sorry for those people just sort of starting out or trying to start out anyway. Mm. Um, so again, another retrospective question. Um, what are you most proud of? I know that that's very philosophical, but is there something <laughs> that... I, I you've worked I, it's it's so expansive your your yeah, body I mean, of work so I'm curious I think um I think setting up a company to be honest um oh I have a question about that <laughs> but go ahead um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I mean you know I, I think is when I started out I knew I wanted to do you know originally prosthetics but I knew it was film that I wanted to get into or that kind of genre mm-hmm. and uh and then um you know you start off as a runner and you sort of prep artist doing roto and then you know my next thing was like right I've got to be this great compositor mm. um and then from there I kind of you know I ended up falling into not not kind of actively looking to be say like a 2d supervisor and going that route or even visual effects supervisor at the time you know it was just always just that next step was always what mm. it was about um and then we were working at a company called uh, the mill and it had like a sidearm multi-beam film um which is where we started doing Doctor Who 
Uh, anyway, we worked there, I think it was about three years. Oh, God, I can't remember now, such a long time ago. We worked there for a, a, you know, a bunch of years. And um, anyway, they decided to close that department down because they wanted to construct the commercials and we were much mm. smaller. You know, it was about 50 of us, I think, in the company. Um, and then this opportunity came along and we were like, you know, well, now is the time, there's about six of us or five of us at the time. We're like, this mm. is a chance to kind of, you know, maybe set up our own company. We talked about it, you know, but as you do sort of like the year before, like pie in the sky, wouldn't it be great? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so they closed us down. We're like, well, you know what? Screw it. It's like now or never. Um, we'll never get this opportunity again. Uh, and, you know, you just kind of just walk into something, which is the best way to do it because you don't, I'm not overthinking it. We were just like, let's just go for it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, and I guess I'm like really proud that we, you know, and it's tough, don't get me wrong. It's like, you know, it's like that running a company in this bloody industry, but um, it's, you know, it's really satisfying uh, and really enjoyable. And, you know, I'm like proud of like all the people that have come through um, that, you know, I've got to work with, that have moved on and, you know, I've made mm. loads of friends and contacts and it's, yeah, it's, uh, I guess that's probably one of the highlights, yeah. So um, you're, you're still considered a small business, right? Yeah. So within, within the COVID ecosystem, how have you kind of adapted I know you said you've moved to more virtual dependency, but how, what what has your kind of general process looked like? So many, and, and you're a female founder as well, and you, but you work with, again, your, your kind of core team, but how has that being a female founder kind of an, uh, impacted your process in, in who you choose to team build with and who you mm-hmm. reach out to um, and maybe yeah, you know, it's, it's what tough. you look to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I before COVID happened, I was um, shooting on the old guy. So I was out of the office, you know, for probably a year and a half. I mm. dipped back in and out and obviously had phone calls, but I never was physically, you know, sat and worked in the office for, for like a year and a half. So I'm, I was quite gutted because when, you know, COVID happened, so it's now it'll be coming up to almost two years, actually, which is mm. for me a real shame. I mean, I've been in and out, you know, the odd day here and there. I guess the hardest thing is, is that really, not be... When we do what we try and do, I mean, I think we're about 90 people at the moment. Um, and we've been trying to do like social evenings on Zoom on a Friday night, you know, okay. so we've done, uh, I don't know, everybody's bought pizza and we've like shared, you know, <laughs> cooking recipes or uh, someone's told, you know, talked a poem out or, or something like that. Just something to keep, you know, just to keep everybody feeling like they're part of a company and not all isolated. And because, you know, um, if you're on like a project, maybe you work with the same 20 people on that project, but you don't necessarily see anybody else in the company that you would do if you were in the office. So, you know, been trying to do these sort of social gatherings sort of every sort of three weeks on a Friday night. Nice um, it was really nice. We streamed yeah. uh, like afterwards, you know, through Zoom, which was quite fun. Everybody had a few drinks and it was a nice way for everybody to kind of keep in touch. So um, I think that's the hardest thing, you know, and we've our sort of lockdown hasn't been, we've kind of, you know, we're not in total lockdown. So, I've been going in and out to the company and I'm seeing a few people here and there, but yeah, I mean, it's tough. So mm-hmm. we're just trying to make the best of it and doing these social evenings to kind of keep everybody in contact with each other. Have you seen an uptick in a lot of the panels that you're, you're getting reached out to, yeah. to be on? Or you say, I, I would think that, you know. Yeah, there's a lot actually. And I think it's yeah. a really nice thing, you know, cause it's yeah. people, it's just a way of people keeping in touch and, you know, feeling like they're still in, you know, in the industry and learning stuff and hearing people talk and there's been you know I've been listening to other ones as well so it's a really nice way to keep uh, everybody feeling like part of something still and not just in this isolation and um, so yeah there's been a lot of that actually yeah I'm kind of sick of hearing my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> what, have, what have you listened to most recently that, that you um, so want the, to share? Uh, yeah so the academy yeah. do um we, we started it off as a london thing called a cup of tea uh yeah. and you just invite fame, you know like uh, actors directors uh sort of craftsmen late women you know into the industry and they it's just like a little panel we just do like a talk and they talk about up and coming projects kind of what we're doing here really yeah. um that's i haven't done the one in the last few weeks but that that's been really really good um that's yeah it's been really nice um yeah. but yeah that, that's what i've kind of done recently <laughs> Um, so what is kind of looking ahead, what, what would be one thing that you think the VFX community needs more of, um, mm. how should they dare <laughs> to defy, shall we say? I mean, in the U S right now and in the world, quite frankly, it's such a, we've just come off UNGA and 
there's so there's so much social impact dialogues kind of transpiring across industries. And so we're seeing kind of a seismic shift ha happen really within racial dialogues. And yeah. I'm just curious kind of what the trickle, we're seeing that in the fe intersectional feminism is becoming much more of a forefront of the conversation in the mainstream. So I'm curious kind of, is, is that trickling into the, the tech space? Cause you're, you're art, you're tech, you're, you wear so many different hats. So- Yeah, I mean, not, not enough to be honest. Um, I think, you know, uh, what I, I mean, it's in the, you know, it's in the spotlight continually, which is great. And I think the more people keep talking about it, you know, all sorts, all diversity. Um, I think we just, it needs to keep being talked about until we see like a bigger change, you know, and, and it's creeping up slowly, but not mm -hmm. fast enough. You know, I think um, seeing, you know, just more diversity in higher up roles, sort of bigger roles would be really mm -hmm. good to see. And it is, and it is coming through. And I think, you know, education plays a massive part of that, um, you know, things that people were unsure about, you know, could I even do those roles? How do I get into those roles, as you were saying earlier? Where do I start? You know, that that is kind of there for people to see now and, and find out about. Mm. Um, lots of organisations, um, you know, lots of courses. And I think we just have to keep talking about it uh, and just keeping it in the spotlight until we start seeing, you know, bigger changes happening. One thing that... Um tends to dominate the emerging tech conversation. I'm curious whether or not it has any impact in the VFX arena is this sense of democratizing access to technology. So a lot of the software that tends to be more out of reach, you're seeing elements like Google Cardboard kind of come into the, the vicinity to, to give kind of rudimentary access to experimentation with some of these more um, high level conversations. So are you see, we also see that kind of on the, on the diplomacy side, um, more conversations happening between stakeholders and constituents. So I, I'm curious kind of in VFX, are you seeing more mentorship kind of come out of this, this climate yeah. or, yeah. Uh, so I am. I, yeah. Yeah, there's, um, uh, I can't forget the name of it now. I mean, basically it's an organization called Access VFX, which is global now, I think in a lot of countries and they've got really good mentorship in place there. People can just sign up. So I've signed up for it and they put you in touch with people that, you know, you can, and it's all via email or phone calls, however you want to do it, how much time you want to give up. Uh, I mean, that's just one. There's, uh, there's, I know of more than that here as well. Um, and I think, I think mentorship, especially right now is really important just mm -hmm. so people can, you know, just get advice and, and find out, you know, or, or just even ask, you know, the silly questions that you're too afraid to ask sometimes. Um, so I, I've definitely seen more of it and it's more accessible for people. And the information is there if people look for it as well. It's not, you know, you have to dig through <laughs> sort of seven layers on of how to find out about these things. Um, I think, yeah, I've, I've definitely seen that difference. Is So you said you've been working pretty extensively in the cloud. Um, are there ways, are, are there some kind of techniques that um, people who are actively working in VFX, are there some techniques that you've been using that you think would benefit people who are listening um not really i mean i think you know most I and mean, there's everybody's kind of working remotely as far as i'm aware a lot of people i've spoken to are um there's not really any techniques um you know um i mean by having a good internet connection obviously <laughs> right yeah um yeah no, yeah no, no kind of secrets or or anything we've invented to make it better it's just you know, we just got a very good sort of workflow um you know and our systems guys are amazing and so patient you know we've got mm -hmm. a whole system so they're not getting overwhelmed with people you know just going oh god it's not working this is broken down blah 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 um so uh yeah nothing nothing specific um so i guess my my kind of last two questions are um, a little bit more on the creative side. So if you, um, kind of comparing projects that you've worked on, you started kind of in Harry Potter, right? And then you had Adrift and The Old Guard and Ex Machina, and you've worked with Alex Garland twice. So I'm curious, do you, do you tend to repeat your, your working with the same directors? Was there a particular um, incentive that, that drew you to working with Alex Garland again? Or was it just the script? Wait. Yeah, I, I love working with Alex. He's such a clever, clever, terrifying man, as in, because he's so, so clever. It's like, he's really fascinating, really interesting. Um, and yeah, I first worked with him on 
Uh, actually, I've done three films with him. The first time I met him was on um, Dread. Um, he oh. did, uh, and I got involved on that. And he's he's a very loyal man, basically. He's but he's just so like really inspiring, you know. Um, so I worked with him on Dread, and he's quite loyal as well. So mm. when his next project came along, which was Ex Machina, uh, you know, he came, he reached out straight away, which is great. You know, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and uh, you know, he got to meet Andrew Whitehurst, who was the overall soup on that. Um, and these two are like literally like peas in a pod. They think the same about everything. <laughs> so it was like they had an amazing relationship. Um, and then, you know, obviously got to work on Annihilation as well, but you know, I, you don't, I, it's great working with the same directors. If, you know, for me, if the script is good and the story's good and you know, you have that really good work ethic with them, um, I, I'd happily work with the same directors again. You know, I'm hoping I get to work with Gina again because it's great working with her on The Old God. Um, oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And she was really like wonderful to work with. So uh, I did say to her, so um, now you've done more VFX, you think, what's your next film? More VFX, please. <laughs> I'm not sure she will. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to mix it up. It's nice to work with different directors, to be honest, um, because, you know, you just learn something new from each of them. And it's it kind of, it's good for you. I mean, for me, it keeps me on my toes because they're not, you know, you get too used to something, you know, you don't, you stop sort of learning or asking the right questions. So mm. I think it's kind of keeps you on your toes if you're, constantly working with different people. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll happily work with, you know, the same directors again, no problem. Do you notice a difference between working with a female director versus a male director in their process or in their thought process or how they even approach VFX? Not really. I mean, it's interesting because, uh, you know, Alex is like very creative, very passionate, and very focused about what he's doing. And actually Gina is the same. She, she was very, like really clear about what she wanted uh, mm. you know, and, and really passionate about her story and, you know, uh, making sure that you got it and you understood where she was coming from. So in that sense, they're both very similar, actually. Um, just, you know, it's a real process for them and like they're both very collaborative, uh, you know, and want to get you involved and mm. get your thought process on it as well, which is really, really nice, you know, rather than just write this, what do this, want this, want this. You're kind mm. of part of that. Um, you know, it's more it's conversational. Very... Yeah. Do you feel like it's, it's more conversational? much more conversation you bounce yeah. ideas off you know you're like oh well what about if we try this you know or mm. but do you know what if you try it this way around and it was you know you're involved in the process which is really nice and, and really important I think so I, I didn't honestly there's no difference for me it's more about their personalities and their mm. you know their vision as opposed to male or female I agree wholeheartedly <laughs> I'm curious <laughs> though in in um do you feel the same way when you're working in film versus television? I know that it's very similar at this point in time, but it wasn't always. And do you feel like, do you lean more towards film these days or? Um, is that, do you know what? I don't have, I, I you know, t I did TV a lot to start with. That's where I kind yeah. of, you know, it was very sort of TV based, which mm. is great TV. Uh, and, you know, and it, it wasn't nowhere near as uh, high end as the film when I started off. And in fact, there's a lot of snobbery towards it, which is quite interesting. Oh, Whereas for me, I'm like, I know it's just ridiculous. And I, for me, if, they, if it's good, like good scripts mm -hmm. and, and you know, the, the content is interesting and the work is good, then for me, it's no, I, ha I have no set. I don't have a choice over film or television. It's just if the content is good and it's a good team, you know, and the work is going to be interesting and fun to mm -hmm. do, then I've just, that's what would drive me as opposed to, is it the film or a TV? When you're reading a script, is there something that you look for? Is it just uh, general general concepts that you're looking for? Or is there something that's, are there more technical aspects that you're looking, when, you, when you're reading your scripts, is it, is it there more technical elements that you're looking for? In her, is, it, is it just like genres that you want to experiment with? Or I'm just curious from, from writers, when writers don't typically think of the VFX process inherently when they're building their story worlds. So I'm curious though, it, it's something that it's a conversation between departments that should be happening more or should be kind of at the forefront of ideology. So I'm curious mm. for writers, what, what your advice would be? Well, for me, I mean, I'm, I'm an avid reader anyway. So uh, whenever I get scripts, you know, I like to sort of be grabbed around the throat in the first sort of few pages. It always mm -hmm. gets me. Um, so, but it's a bit of both really. Uh, you know, obviously you want to enjoy the story, um, you know, rather than just dissecting like, oh, well, that could be a visual effects and this could be, you know, which you have to do mm. as well. So I, 
I tend to read it and if it's really good and I'm, I'm really sort of in the story, I forget about the visual effects while I'm reading it and I come back round and read it again a second time. Mm. Um, but, you know, you know, you can quickly, from the years of doing it, quickly as you're reading through it, know, I mean, the obvious stuff, which is going to have to be done as a visual effects, but, you know, I've got into sort of uh, pre-meetings before, you know, already going, well, this could, you know, I've already thought, well, this is going to be a visual effect. Mm. And you've gone into the HOD, which is what I love. And they're like, oh yeah, we can build that and we'll shoot it. And I'm like, oh, great. Take that one off, you know, because I'm already, you know, we think, well, I think, well, visual effects, visual effects, visual effects. But actually, you know, that's what's nice about having these sort of pre-meetings with the HODs and the page mm. turns. You go, mm. well, you know, this department can actually, we could build this half of it and maybe you need to do this bit, you know, and you're going to, it's going to look better for it. And you're like, oh yeah, okay. And then maybe they can't shoot something and you can go, well, it's easy enough for us to do it if you just pop a green screen down here or, or you know, that kind of thing. So um yeah um sorry I forgot your question now I'm just waffling on there. no it's just <laughs> no no I was just curious kind of like if, if what your advice would be to writers on how to better structure their work or ah, um, or is there anything in particular that you look for when reading work well I mean the thing is I think if you're right when I mean, you're a writer so I guess it can't dictate you know you've got to write you what your story is can't dict can't be dictated to you by the different departments of whether or not they can do it We've had, yeah, so sorry to come back to your point, we've had stuff where something's been in the story, but it's such a, I don't know, let's say the budget isn't there or it's, it's a one, one-off thing which is going to be like really expensive to do just for mm. this one moment, let's say, in the story. Mm. So, you know, we'd go back to the writer with the director and we'd go, well, is there any way you could change the story point? So, you know, to accommodate that maybe rather than building this huge thing, we just build this or, you know, it's, uh, again, it's just talking about it. Um after it's been written and things do get changed occasionally because it's just not feasible, um, whether financially or location wise to shoot that part of the story. If that makes sense. So, so Yeah, in a way you're like a story architect as well. Which yeah, is kind you of kind cool. of yeah, yeah, yeah. Really well you can, but you know, yeah, yeah. we're just kind of just giving everybody the options to say, maybe is another way to write that point or, you know, again, it's just collaboration, just talking it through. Mm. So I, I, I'm sure you're asked this question a lot um, and I wanted to save it for the end, but did you feel that there was a, a, a noticeable change in your perspective after winning an Oscar? Did, did you, did you, did A, your community change? Did the treatment of you change in any way? Did your personal philosophy change? Did access change? What were kind of... Yes, to all of that. Actually. Uh, yeah. You know what the hardest thing was? I think it was the fear. You just don't know what mm. to expect. Um, so you'd like in this whirlwind for a week, which was amazing. And don't get me wrong, it sounds mm. awful, it wasn't, it was amazing. Um, and you're in this whirlwind of just like, what the hell has just happened? And then you come back and suddenly it's like everybody, everything, it's just very overwhelming. And you're mm. getting asked to do anything and everything. And it was kind of, uh, and I guess it was it was weird because, yeah, it was just like this like fear all the time. And every time I was asked to do something, I was like, oh God, I can't, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like a real panic. And, yeah, I mean, doors definitely opened. I can't lie. It was, you know, it's definitely given me more opportunities. Um, you know, whether or not that would have happened before, I don't know. You know, maybe mm. it would have been a slow process. Um, so I'm really grateful for it. Um, you know, uh, it's been, yeah, I mean, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. It's definitely opened doors and it does, it, it does get you into things that you might not have got into before. Uh, and, you know, people listen, which is great. So, you know, wish everybody could win one. <laughs> it has been good. Yeah, definitely. Has it changed your personal philosophy at all, though, in how um, you in in how you structure your work or not really? What you're drawn I mean, to? it kind of. Uh, I mean, what it did was kind of give, give me confidence, I think, because mm -hmm. I kind of this this all happened, you know. And rather than sort of running and hiding from it, uh, it was like you know you just got this amazing opportunity. You know, people would die for this. It's, you know, just like you need to you need to take this opportunity and grab it and and run with it. That kind mm -hmm. of I think that really. Um, it, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, it was like it was more of an accelerant than than a yeah. learning agent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good word. Absolutely. No, that's exciting though. Um, yeah. So for I, I feel like I've been talking uh, to to you a lot, and I'd be curious to. Okay, so she's just mentioned that there. If if you have questions and you're currently on the chat, we'd love for you to um, send them through on on the YouTube live. Um, those will be forwarded to me and then I'll share them with Sarah. So just to let you know, we can open that up. Um, but to, to kind of continue, um, 
are there are there any kind of um, a, a lot of the kind of systemic changes that we see um, tend to um, tend to kind of work in more siloed approaches. So we, we, we tend, when we're looking at departments, we tend to have more siloed conversations. And one of the things I hope that this chat does is facilitate more conversations between departments, because I think that those conversations need to take place more um, in those dialogues or um, in approaching those dialogues. What would you think, um, or what are your thoughts on um, more, collaborative dialogues happening on set, in post, in development? What, what are your kind of insights uh, in, in like the comprehensive process of filmmaking? Um, I mean, I, uh, for me, and, sorry, go on. No, 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 I, it's a very yeah. broad question. So bear with me. No, I mean, <laughs> I, um, I think it's really, really important. Uh, you know, if, if like, let's say I'll, I'll use your guard again as an example, you know, I, I came on that early on um, not at the uh, development stage at all, um, but you know, once I think it was maybe three months, before, it was just before prep started. Mm. Um, and that was really important because we were having, you know, like we said, we we're having these conversations with all the departments way in advance of going out shooting. Mm. Um, so, you know, we, you know, I've, like, I've done projects before where I've come on after, you know, it's everything's already been decided and you're literally just going out on set to cover, you know, days here and there. and you know, I've, we've come back at the end of it with lots of stuff that could have been done better in a different way, um, could have saved money and time doing it. You know, there was, if we'd have had the conversations early on, I think things would have been better for it. So I think it's really important to have um, those conversations at the beginning, collaboration. And even in development, as you were saying, depending on what it is, if you're doing something, you know, let's say something is like predominantly a big visual effect piece or, you know, I think getting that department involved early on in the development stage while the script's being written, you know, as a writer, it's gonna help you, you know, if you've, you've got these ideas and, um, you know, you're like, is, do you think it's feasible? And, you know, we can sort of say straight off, you know, well, actually this this might be tricky to do, or what about this could be cool? And you're kind of all talking about it early on. So um, I'd say it's like really, really important. And for me, I definitely do a better job if I'm involved at the beginning, you know, because you know, we can all make our own assumptions and uh, have our own ideas when you're looking at a script or we've had a conversation with one person or two or three people. But to sit in a room with all of the, you know, the heads of department and really sort of uh, mash through this and talk about it is, I think, really important to, you know, a good process and a good filmmaking process and, you know, something good at the end of it uh, because it's been thought about and talked about from day one. No, I agree with you completely. One of the things that I think is great about the UK educational model is that you see so much of that kind of tutorial system, right? Where it's like mm -hmm. this seminar conversation, you're seeing more more kind of smaller group dialogues happen. And yeah. that can really inspire so many more colors to, to a thought process. Yeah. Um, and so I, I completely agree with you. And it's something that I, I, I hope the larger systems kind of whether that's on the localized globalization level um, or more comprehensively throughout industry, it would be great to see um, more of uh, something as a writer, I would love to see more of. So it's great to hear on the VFX side that that's yeah. similar. Um, I love so. Awesome, isn't it basically, yeah. Wait, no, no, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, I, I think very, very important to, uh, you know, just having those conversations, as you said, um, mm -hmm. makes, you know, makes a big difference. So one question we got in the chat was, are there any projects to look out for that are coming up for you that you're really excited about or any ways that we can support you as audience members? Um, um, I guess there's, a, there's one which we're doing at the moment. I think I can talk about it. Just about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, actually, there's a TV show we're doing at the moment, which is really exciting. Uh, and what mm. I've seen on there so far, looks good. Um, it's for... <laughs> I can't even remember who it's for. And basically it's called Intergalactic. It's a big sci-fi show. Um, oh, cool. uh, looks really fun. I think it's out next year. Um, I know we're finishing it up at the end of this year. Um, so that, that's a good one to look out for. Um, and we just we just finished working on Rebecca as well, which I think has just come out on Netflix, or is it due to, um, which is a good one. In terms of what I'm doing, there's a few projects I'm talking about at the moment, but nothing mm. I can say what it is, because it's all kind oh, of just okay. early stages of talks. Um, but all, all sound very, very good and exciting. Um, so I'm hoping to get involved in one of those uh, before the end of the year, which would be great. 
That's super. Um, is there is there one piece of advice that you would give to rising female filmmakers that you wish you had had and um, maybe didn't get or something that you think that should be at the forefront of? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I spoke about it sort of uh, very briefly earlier. I think, you know, God, having if it's something you really want to do, it's like mm. just having, uh, you know, just you've got to go for it. Um, and it is hard. I know it's really hard sometimes. And, you know, it feels like an uphill battle. Um, but, you know, if it's something you're really passionate about and you really want to do, I, I truly believe, you know, you'll, you'll get there. And I think, you know, just there's people around you, there's so many people you can ask questions to and reach out to. So I think just have confidence and, and definitely ask as many questions as you can because it's really important, um, you know, and uh, it's definitely helped me through my career. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for, for sharing your insights and having just like such a great dialogue. It's been so wonderful to have this opportunity to talk with you and learn oh, from you. you. Um, yeah. It's been really, really instructive for me. Um, and thank you for sharing your experience with all of us today. Um, me. Thank you, I've enjoyed it. No, uh, like, I, uh, like I said, I hope, I hope that this helps to kind of at least reframe the dialogues on, on set a little bit more and encourage a little bit more interdepartmental conversations, at least in process, um, to open it up more seminar style. Um, but before we sign off, um, it is the last day of Imagine This. Uh, programming. So uh, join uh, Susie, Patrice, and the entire community for the closing night party. If you're available, um, that information is on Instagram um, at Imagine This uh, Productions. So thank you so much again. I really, this has been wonderful. Um, if, any last questions for Sarah, please send them through. Um, but thank you again. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having um, me. Yeah.